So 99% of people who think about starting an SMMA or currently is running an agency or have been running an agency for years at this point, 99% of them do it completely wrong, right? Most of them are following advice from some guru, high school dropout, you know, people flexing their, their Lambos, their linen shirts, their Laura Pianas, or they're just constantly watching videos on YouTube, they're searching for free information and trying to find this best cold email script, the best guru, the best agency method in 2024, or they're just spending the time sending outreach. They're stuck in the day-to-day, -day, they're stuck in their business, they're stuck doing service delivery, client communication, and they just want a way to actually get out of it. And then you get the 1%. The people who can skip all the pain of starting an agency, all the pain of, you know, how do I stand out from everyone else? How do I actually close the deals? They just follow a proven process step by step, very calmly, very easily, and they skip, like I was saying, all the pain of running an agency. And this applies to SMMA, it applies to agency, it applies to growth partnering, IPGA, AI automation, all these other you know, weird buzzwords that you see on YouTube, it applies. So by doing it the right way, by doing it like the 1%, you can literally progress 10 to 100 times faster with less work, with no headaches, without all the, the stress of running the agency. So that you just have people around you asking, well, how did you actually progress so quickly? How did you make so much progress in such a short amount of time? So after growing two agencies to over 50K per month in under 90 days, what I wanna do is walk you through exactly what I would do if I was starting over in 2024, knowing what I know now, but also knowing the new ways of doing things, right? In all the other methods in the past, like sending outreach, $100 million offers, these no-brainer weird guarantees, Knowing all these things, knowing the old way and the new way, I wanna walk you through exactly what I would do if I was in your position, whether you're thinking about starting, whether you've already started, or whether you've been in the game for, let's say three to five years already. Now, the first change that I'd make is actually prioritizing health. Now, it sounds very strange, but there was a point where I was running the business on two hours of sleep, eating terrible food, and just feeling horrible the entire time, but we were making money. So at the beginning of last year, I started scaling the second agency from zero to 50K per month, in under 90 days. And while I was doing this, while I was in the process, I was doing nearly everything in the agency myself, in the sense that I was still involved in client work, I was still taking sales calls, I was still booking the meetings. And as you can imagine, you're just so scattered all the time, you know? You wake up and you have 10,000 things on your to-do list, you don't know what to do first. And just imagine trying to work with 20 clients at once, them all asking you questions, while you're taking, you know, sales calls. So in between calls, you're answering clients. And then as soon as you go to sleep, the American clients wake up and now you're answering those questions. So from start to finish, you're just involved in everything. And that's where I was. So at this time, I was just on calls, on tasks, back to back from start to finish. So let's say I would wake up around 7 a.m. and I would start working on, let's say, deep work, client work from you know, that time till around 12, 1 p.m. And then once 1 p.m. started, I would start taking sales calls, right? And in between, then I also had client calls. So this would go on till, you know, 11, 12, 1 a.m., right? At, I remember one day specifically, it was terrible, but I went to sleep at around 12 a.m. after finishing a sales call and I just couldn't sleep. So I, I checked my phone, like I'm half asleep, and then I see someone, a prospect, and they were like, hey, I'm actually pretty interested. Can I get into a, like, can we set up a time sometime? So me being who I was at the time, just really wanted to scale rapidly. It was around 12 a.m. and I was like, look, let's just get on a call now. They're like, I'm busy now. I'm like 1 a.m. So I get on a call at 1 a.m. with a prospect. And before the call, like I'm dead asleep. So I'm trying to like hype myself up. I'm doing pull-ups and stuff. And I get on the call. We go through it, 30 minutes, usual script. And we actually close them, right? I close a deal ending at 2 a.m. in the morning. And on paper, this sounds great. Like this is fantastic. But what we need to understand is that even though I close this client, I probably could have taken the call tomorrow and gotten the same close, right? The same deal done. But because I had no concept of prioritizing the health, it, I just took it at 2 a.m. I didn't prioritize the sleep. But then for like the next week, I was feeling the effects of it. So at the time, I didn't get good sleep. I was sleeping, let's say, four hours a night. When I did eat, it would be just some, you know, takeaway meal. Like it genuinely got to the point where I was making like 20, 30, 40, 50K a month. But I was just like ordering KFC because it came in like 15 minutes. And it was just like easy. And it got like some protein in it. So I would just order these terrible meals day after day. And at the same time, it's like when you're sleep deprived and when your brain is just like fried from everything, from meetings, from doing the work, you don't make good decisions. So it'll be like, let's say 8, 9 p.m. And it's like, oh, like I'm bored. Like you just want like some dopamine or something. It's like you don't want to watch a YouTube video. Then you just end up like eating like donuts and shit. So I would just have these terrible days where it's like I would force the work down but then I would eat terrible food and then I would sleep terribly. And like, it was just bad. So every day was actually a pain. It's like, 
I would wake up with like genuine anxiety working on the business. Like I didn't want to work on it. So even though on paper, I could be like, oh, I'm making 50K a month, oh, six figure entrepreneur. Even then it's like, you hate your life because you're taking sales calls from like 12 to 9 p.m. It's like, you can't, even if I wanted to go out, even if I wanted to spend the money, it's like, when? Like, <laughs> I'm either sleeping or I'm working. So what I would do differently if I was starting again, and it seems like such simple, like basic advice, but honestly, it's really, really important. And I'm realizing it now is that setting a clear bedtime, like just having a clear time that you go to sleep, a clear time that you wake up, a clear diet. So knowing what foods you're gonna eat, having it in advance, prepping it in advance, I promise you this will make you more money than, than any one of these like business tactics or some cold email script. Because the thing is, let's say you're operating at 50% capacity, which I was operating at less than that when we're at 50K. Let's say I was operating at 50% capacity. It means I still have another 50% of clarity, so mental clarity, energy, so actual like output, actual physical output, 50% decision-making ability, so I can make better decisions, my mood will be better, my decisions will be better, everything will be better, right? I'm, I literally have a version of myself that could be double the output of what I'm doing now. So imagine your decision-making was twice as good. Imagine you could work twice as long. Imagine you could focus twice as much, right? You progress in business so much faster than if you were this little like brain dead agency guru. So it got to the point now where I'm even working with a performance coach to actually monitor my sleep. They check it every single day. They check my diet. They give me the exact foods. They tell me what to drink, tell me what to eat so that I can just perform in the best way possible. Because if I had twice the output, I could have twice the size of the business, right? I could have double the revenue. In fact, it'll probably be a lot more because it's compounding. So I could be two, three, four times more successful than what I am now if I prioritize that. Now, the next thing that I focus on in starting SMA again in 2024 is applying leverage sooner. So the idea of this started when I was on Instagram, as I shouldn't be. I noticed people talking about the idea of a one-person business. And when I looked at a one-person business and people used to speak about this all the time, it seemed like those like, like digital nomad guys who make like 10K a month and they just go to like Bali or Thailand and they just like don't do anything. Like it seemed like those people that just wanted to work like two hours per day and then they just like, I don't know, like drink from coconuts and stuff. Thing is, I didn't want that. Like when I think of running a business, it's like I want billions or nothing. Like I don't, I don't want this little like 10K a month lifestyle. So I used to think one person businesses were just that. But then I heard, I was listening to a podcast when I was walking. This was um, after dinner one day, I was walking around and I heard the podcast by a billionaire, I forgot his name, but he was talking about the idea of a three person business that makes billions per year, right? And then I was like, okay, now I'm listening. And he didn't even need to go into that much detail because it just opened the, the thinking for me. Because what he was explaining was that leveraging things like no code, leveraging things like software, leveraging things like AI, it allows a few people with good skill sets to run so much. The output is crazy. For example, if you have an AI tool that you know, helps you write copy for your clients, you could just have one very talented marketing manager and he could write, you know, 20 scripts in under 30 minutes using the AI, right? The AI isn't going to replace the people. It's that the people who use AI is going to replace all the people. So in the podcast, they were talking about the idea of a three person business pulling in billions of dollars per year. And one of the people on the team was the head of AI. The other was the operator and the other was the CEO slash salesperson. So those roles alone could turn over a billion dollars plus per year. And Again, he didn't need to go into detail, but this way of thinking really sparked the idea in my mind when I was still running the Done For You agency and we had around 10 team members on board and we were doing around 50K per month. But the thing is, if, if I hear about people doing a billion dollars per year and they have three team members and I have 10 and I'm pulling in 50K a month, it's like, bro, like something's wrong here. So what I ended up doing, I, I thought about this like day and night for a long time, is in the Done For You agency, I started applying leverage in the sense that I looked into these no-code tools. So for example, Zapier and other things like, you know, AI, looking at the AI tools that are in the tools that I'm using now. So for example, Notion has AI, Loom has AI. And I was looking for ways that I could streamline the business. So for example, in the onboarding for our agency, you know, clients had to fill out information, they had to get certain things, they had to get all these, you know, they have common questions, all of these things. And what I did was I figured out a way to automate the entire process from start to finish. So whenever a new client came on board, they paid. And because I created the Zap, it automatically sent them the onboarding form. And the onboarding form contained videos of me explaining, you know, who we are, what we do, how it works. It also included the questions that they needed. It also included what they needed to upload so that we could get started. It also included all the things that we needed to get going 
They just did it by themselves. So now we didn't have an onboarding process to the point where we had a client success manager and we just got rid of them because we didn't need them, right? They, they had no job to do. So looking into these ways that I can apply leverage, I wish I did it sooner. And on top of that, the bigger form of leverage that we made is that we transitioned from the done for you agency to the done with you implementation. So right now, instead of running it for our clients, which we still do, but we're, we're rolling it out, but we're eventually ending it right now, instead of doing these things for our clients, we install it into their businesses. So then they don't need us anymore. If we did leave, they would still have everything. Plus the founders understand what they're doing so they can get the results for the rest of their lives. And what this is, is the acquisition systems. So giving them the systems to build the offer so they can stand up from everyone else, building the appointment setting system so they can get 50 to 100 qualified bookings per month, and then the sales systems. So using content to sell, doing it at scale, automating the whole process, and then just automating the entire agency. So we give these systems to our clients now as opposed to doing it for them. So they get better results, plus they get the actual infrastructure and it's 10 times cheaper, right? We were charging around 5K a month, 4K a month for our done for you services. Now it's just like a one-time cost. And the third thing that I do, if I was starting SMA again in 2024, is picking an untapped niche. So when I first started in the space, I took one of the uh, guru courses where they recommend starting an agency, get to your first 10K a month in 30 days, and it's gonna be perfect, and you can buy your Rolex, and then it doesn't happen. And then what usually happens is that you get into the course, you, they tell you you need to pick a niche, and you end up picking the same niche that the guru does. And because of that, you do the same thing that the 10,000 other people do. So everyone's starting an e-com agency, right? So we're all running this, Facebook ads for e-com, and they tell you you need to send outreach, and it's like, okay, here's a template. Don't copy it. Don't copy it, right? There's a lot of people in this course, so don't copy it, but just change some things. And then what happens is that everybody copies it, but they just change, like, one word. <laughs> Instead of saying, thanks, Ethan, they're like, best regards, Ethan. Things that don't make a difference. So because of this, everyone does the same thing, everyone uses the same script, Everyone, you know, just saturates the whole market. But what I would do if I was starting out is I would pick a niche where it's untapped and ideally in an emerging market. So the things that I'm seeing now in terms of emerging markets, like I was saying earlier, so for example, getting into, let's say, AI implementation for agencies, right? Another thing is, you know, content is really scaling up. The whole creator economy is growing. So partnering with creators as opposed to, you know, local businesses, things like this, where you can really latch onto what's trending but also in a unique way. So what I would do if I was starting out is I would look for niches where the gurus aren't like promoting it, right? You don't see people with their Rolexes and their Lambos on YouTube talking about, oh, start this info product growth agency or other things where it's like, oh, AI implementation is the best thing that ever happened. If you don't get on this, it's dying. Like, like just find something else. So I would honestly look for obscure niches. And if you're thinking right now, okay, I don't know an obscure niche. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to pick a e-com brands. What you can do is even if you pick, okay, don't pick e-com brands, but even if you pick a niche that is slightly more common, right? Let's say the info product thing where you, I don't know, you do that content, whatever. Even if you pick a niche, but then you sub niche in that niche, I'm saying niche a lot, but even if you sub niche in there, it's gonna allow you to stand out. So let's say info product, right? That could mean anything, anyone selling anything online. But if you got specific on what type of info product, you're immediately gonna be able to stand out. So let's say you're helping people who sell dog training, you know, education services. They have a course on how to train your dog. That would be more effective than being like, oh, I'll, I'll help anyone with a course. Because now you look like the other people who are saying, oh, I help everyone with a course. So what I would do if I was starting on, what I would recommend for you if you're earlier on or if you're looking to, you know, slightly pivot in what you're doing is go after people and niches where it's less competitive because every single thing that you do is gonna be more effective. If you send an outreach message, it's gonna be more effective. They're gonna be like, oh, this is the first time someone's outreached me with a loom, like that's fantastic. Or well, the first time someone sent a voice note, or wow, this is a great offer. I've never had someone with a guarantee before. All these things that you do is like fresh to them. As opposed to if you reach out to an e-com brand and you're promising bro, an extra 500K in 30 days or your money back and we'll send you $10,000 on a pay and results basis, they'll still be like, nah, like, nah, <laughs> like, can you work for me for free first? Like, this is how they act. So if you can find a niche that's, Untapped, I think you'll do fantastic. So these are the three things that I would change if I was starting again, which is prioritizing health, applying more leverage and doing it sooner, and then finding an untapped niche and then working with that.